Hi guys. <clears throat> well, it is a cold, blustery, gray and gloomy day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is a Monday morning, March 20th, 2023, which is <clears throat> either the last day of winter or the first day of spring, depending on how you want to look at it. And I guess it is about six degrees warmer in Texas than in New York. So anyway, I just had to do a screaming rant on uh, this deluge of doomer porn uh, in today's mainstream media news about that new IPCC report talking about the rapidly closing window of opportunity. So now that I've gotten that off my chest, I, I just uh, <clears throat> I, I just can't help myself, guys. Uh, over here at medium.com checking out uh, our old godfather of doomer porn. We're going to call uh, this man the Larry Flint of the doomosphere and that would be of course Umer Hack. Uh, it, it, you know, it would, uh, the, the guy is unbelievable. He, he truly is impressive. This man, I, I mean, just to type what he types. It would, would, would take hours and hours and hours. Uh, the, the guy is an unbelievable, unrelenting fountain of doomer porn. And uh, I cannot think of a better way to, uh, to close out winter 2023 and uh, dive into springtime and then checking in with our old buddy, our old, uh, and I don't think Umer considers himself to be a doomer, a, uh, officially. So anyway, take it away. Umer hack, obviously, I'm going to put the, uh, I'm going to put the link on here. And you can go read this yourself or listen to the little robot read it to you. Take it away, Umer Hack, he wrote this yesterday. How is our civilization actually doing? You probably don't want to know. <clears throat> if you read newspaper columns like I do, you might have noticed there's a new sort floating around. A new sort floating around. It goes like this. Oops. Well, before I dive into this, guys, I had better, uh, I had better, uh, I don't want to collapse of my battery. So let me go get plugged in. We would hate for, uh, my battery to, uh, for my battery to collapse during a, uh, <laughs> during an article about collapse. All right. I don't know if that was a typo or not. We're going to add a couple of words. If you read newspaper columns like I do, you might have noticed there's a new sort of meme floating around. It goes like this. The doomers are wrong. Look at those foolish doomers. We're not doomed. So why do these damn doomers keep saying we are? It's funny because this is how discourse works. An idea begins to circulate and reproduce. I suppose that people like you and me are, like you and me are, to columnists like this, card-carrying doomers, which is exactly what I am. Uh, <clears throat> I'll come back to that point because, well, I think at this point, Doomer has become a kind of thing that power excels at. Basically an insult as a substitute for substance. Doom, it means a lot of things, and none of them mostly are the caricature painted by the Doomers are wrong crowd. But I get ahead of myself. What strikes me about 
these columns is their lack of substance. Let's do a little civilizational report card. It's easy enough to call people funny names and laugh them off, but it is harder to really do the difficult work of thinking well about serious issues. When we actually look at the state of our civilization in factual, empirical terms, the results are, well, you'll be able to judge for yourself in just a moment. The report card. Okay, here is Umer Hack's little civilizational report card. Let's start with life. After centuries ascending upward, progress has flatlined and ground to a halt. That would be progress in the biggest terms, what economists and social scientists call development indicators. They include everything from life expectancy to trust to happiness and many more. They represent our truest picture of life itself, how people's lives are doing. Okay, how about economics? Living standards are declining in 90% of countries, and he has links to all of this stuff. <clears throat> Real incomes are plummeting across the globe. That's because inflation has skyrocketed while wages have been stagnant for decades in many countries. Meanwhile, amidst this wreckage, the merely super-rich have grown ultra-rich. They now have more money than anyone could spend in a hundred lifetimes, and yet the average person is going into debt because they cannot make ends meet. Okay, how about society? Each generation now does worse than the one before it, and that has become an entrenched, long-run trend. We have four to five generations with sharply declining outcomes and fortunes. Generation X began the trend, Millennials did worse than they did, and now Zoomers are doing worse still. Count the generations on the edge, and that is five generations of decline. Okay, politics. Democracy is in steep decline around the globe. Enough for political scientists to speak of, quote, democratic backsliding as a defining feature of this age. That is an altogether too polite way of saying that a wave of fanaticism, whether fascism, authoritarianism, theocracy, nationalism, or weird admixtures of all the above, like America's Christian nationalism is surging around the world. India, China, Russia, right down to Sweden and Italy, no corner of the globe is left untouched. Okay, let's look in with the ecology report card. But, the points above may in truth be small fry. Well, they are small fry compared to this one. We are running out of our most basic, critical, fundamental resources, the ones which provide our necessities. We are now running short of water, food, hence skyrocketing prices. Clean air, which is what corona panic and the pandemics to follow it really means. Energy, as the last few years have so brutally shown. What happens as we run out of these things at a civilizational scale? 
crops fail, water sources dry up, energy grids sputter out. Okay, what is the psychology on the report card? It is hardly surprising that all of this has left people feeling seriously and profoundly threatened. People are more pessimistic now than at any point during the last century. Anxiety, rage, anger, and despair are the defining sentiments of now, along with maybe the numbness of endlessly scrolling some algorithmically generation infotainment feed, which is pretty much what Doomer Porn uh, has become for a lot of us. Just, just all of this doom and gloom uh, has now just joined uh, the numbness of endlessly scrolling uh, algorithmically generated infotainment feed. It's just become infotainment for doomers. I could go on, but it's hardly necessary. All the above are facts. F-A-C-T-S. They are not opinions, speculations, or even conclusions. They are empirical truths about our civilization. What grade would you give us? You can be the judge of that, but no reasonable person can hardly give us a very good one. We are in a new age, and while that phrase often means good things, this time it is so dystopian that scholars have had to invent a new word for all of the above. Polycrisis. All right, we have a new word for the chronicle of the collapse. Polycrisis. Each of the points above is its own crisis, and each one of them would be bad enough for any age. Challenging, threatening, arduous enough but all of them together at once, that is something new, genuinely unprecedented, even in humanity's long history of war and conflict and strife. Polycrisis only begins to point to the scale of what we're facing, and scale is precisely the element that needs to be grasped well here. The points above don't just apply to one nation here or there. They affect and afflict us at a civilizational scale. They are worldwide problems. It's not just the Colorado River that's running dry. Rivers across the globe, you know, are running dry. It's not just that real incomes are falling in ever-troubled America. They are more or less falling across the world. Polycrisis doesn't just mean, quote, we have a lot of little crises in various countries. It means we are beset by a baffling set of civilization scale crises, each of which is lethal enough in its own right, but when they intersect, well, their risk only multiplies. You can now see many forms of feedback happening between different elements in the polycrisis. Climate change causes flows of refugees, which only accelerate fascist tides, which go on right on and make climate change worse. Sweden's new formerly fascist party, founded by lots of laughs, a literal SS officer. One of the first things it did in power was 
eliminate the environment ministry. Good luck with that one, guys. America shows us the most classic feedback pattern of all. Falling incomes and declining fortunes produced a seismic shift away from democracy. A loss of confidence in institutions turns people towards fanatics and lunatics. Hey, presto, violent crackpots like Marjorie Taylor Greene in Congress, <clears throat> and that's after the coup attempt. Britain shows us yet another feedback pattern. Nationalism turns people away from functioning modern social contracts, which contracts the economy, which accelerates nationalism, and before you know it, in an era of climate change, vegetables are being rationed. I have used the, this technical word above, feedback, but in simpler terms, what could we call it when feedbacks between elements of polycrisis cause runaway effects? Collapse. Okay, so collapse is what we call it when feedbacks between elements of polycrisis cause runaway effects. I like that uh, definition of collapse. When we say that, quote, America collapsed, past tense, as a society, or that Britain is collapsing, or even that running out of the basics threatens our civilization with collapse, we are referring to precisely these feedbacks. Let's take that last example. Running out of the basics threatens our civilization with collapse. What does that mean? Well, it means that people will turn against democracy to authoritarianism grasping for their own share of what is left, and doing that will, of course, shatter any possibility of collective action in fixing what is broken in the first place. Now, I bring all that up because when people speak of doomers, especially, you know, columnists, when columnists speak of doomers, they are attacking a straw man while simultaneously ignoring the facts. To say that things are collapsing is correct. I've already shown you how everything from economics to politics to society to progress itself is literally beginning to crack and crumble in hard, empirical, factual terms. That is dire. It's shocking. It's alarming. But it's also true. And yet, when the word doomer is used, you know and I know that the person, person using it means something very different. They use the word to conjure up visions of preppers stocking basements with canned food so that we all laugh, or maybe to conjure up fantasies of Mad Max-style armored cars and maniacs wielding clubs. Ha ha! But this outsized character caricature does a disservice to us all. It's not thoughtful, and more to the point, it's not accurate because Nobody 
is saying that is what is going to happen. Well, Umer, a lot of people are saying that's what's going to happen. Now, I am not necessarily one of them, but I'm not ruling it out completely. Uh, none of us who understand that our civilization is now facing an existential crisis in the slightest, think in the slightest, that you can somehow survive it on your own by prepping away and stocking the larder with enough ketchup. LOL, as if we mean the precise polar opposite without collective action, things will keep on collapsing. And again, I'm going, you know, this is where I uh, probably start to part company with uh, Umer Hack, I, where I part company with the uh, godfather of Doomer porn, with the Larry Flint of the Doomosphere, Umer Hack still believes that collective action uh, will keep things from collapsing at this point. Uh, anyway, it is back to uh, Umer. It is in that sense that the caricature of Doomer is a disservice. I don't see anybody who, uh, who is painted with this brush saying remotely anything like its detractors imagine they're saying. Nobody painted with this brush is saying that the world will revert to Mad Max and hey man, buy a spiked club and put it in your prepper's larder. Wrong. Those who are talking about this subject are usually doing so far, far more thoughtfully and incisively than their critics. Let's talk about them for a second. Modern thought, such that it is, at least in our speaking, in our English speaking societies, is built on a set of assumptions. Ones that, when I point them out to you, are going to seem absurd because, well, they are. The first one you know, that growth can continue indefinitely. You know, talking about the critics of Doomers, you know, the first one they trot out is that growth can continue indefinitely, but that assumption is made because of another one, that there will always be a black box. In economics, this black box literally has a name, TFP, Total Factor Productivity. That is the assumption that our civilization will always follow an upwards trajectory because, well, there will always be a black box. Tomorrow, someone will invent something that solves all of our problems. We don't even need to worry about what it is. We can just assume because that's what's happened so far in history. Hey, once we were agrarian peasants and along came the Industrial Revolution, and after steam power came coal and gas power. We needed stuff to build with after that, to make stuff out of. <coughs> and some genius invented plastic, the black box, probably made out of plastic. It'll always be there, but this reading of history is wrong. We know that now. What did we really invent during the Industrial Revolution? Not 
just the black box of horsepower or Newtonian technology that could use gears to multiply force into farms we could use, but also sweeping aside its negative impacts. So sure, the Industrial Revolution came along and made living standards explode, but that's when we began emitting carbon too and never stopped. Only it took us centuries to notice it was a problem, even when mines way back then said it was. Do you know why, for example, the Victorians invented public parks? Because city air was so polluted that the working and new middle class were getting ill. Do you know why restaurants were invented? to literally restore you. History is not just a black box of technical progress. It's also social institutions trying to, the, trying to repair the damage that does, which is often swept under the rug from carbon emissions to mass extinction. We economists, and don't forget that uh, it's easy to forget that Umer Hack is technically an economist. We economists call those externalities, meaning they're external, really, to the way we think about the world. Carbon emissions didn't matter for centuries. External, outside our concerns, but now we know that they never should have been. Better to have had slightly slower progress in living standards and a planet because, well, right now we wouldn't be facing this big crunch. Or take mass extinction. That is the externality we are sweeping under the rug now. Carbon? Most people will admit now it matters and our institutions are at least trying to take it seriously, but talk about extinction and people's minds turn off because our institutions think of it as hippy-dippy nonsense. But is it? Good luck having fresh water without fish cleaning rivers, or clean air without trees, or any of the other services, as ecologists call them, that finely balanced ecosystems provide. We're running out of water, and water is used to make literally everything. Go ahead and tell me how much usable fresh water is left on a planet where life is going extinct. The answer to that is probably not much by definition. History is not just a magical black box of wonderful machines. It is also the rich capturing the gains, the powerful using them to subjugate from the Nazis to the American slavers who inspired them, and it's also brushing the cost of all those black boxes under the rug, like carbon emissions. Nothing comes without a cost. I think those who are called doomers, they're simply asking for the real cost to be acknowledged. Real cost of what? Of all of it. Industrialization, centralization, commodification, privatization, financialization. Should medical debt and student debt really be a thing that's bought and sold for profit? If we're running out of water, shouldn't that be counted as a cost too, included in our calculus of success and failure? Nobody 
Willie is saying that you're going to have to drive through Thunderdome like Mad Max, but I do see a lot of people saying that the costs have piled up, the ones we ignored, from ecological ruin to mass extinction to inter intergenerational decline to falling real incomes to democracy itself crumbling, and they are now swapping what we used to think of as the benefits, which now mostly go to the rich anyway, who need them least. Cost and benefits of what? Of the central purpose of our societies, growth. It's not, well, according to Umer, it's not that growth is a cancer. Growth is necessary unless you really want to live a Stone Age life, and if you do, well, nobody's really stopping you. But it is that growth comes at a far, far higher price than our institutions, our leaders, our systems acknowledged, understood, calculated, budgeted, and planned for. But now those costs are coming due. We can go on ignoring them and pretend that everything's okay but that is foolish because we can all see things coming undone by the day. Remember how this age is the most pessimistic in a century? We can all see the cost headed our way now from failed harvest to dried up rivers to rationing to fascism to crackpots who say that all that is nothing to worry about. Because, you know, doom is something that never really happens. Not in the real world. But doom does happen. It happens over and over again. Some people are just lucky enough that they've never experienced even a touch of it. Those people are privileged and sadly quite often they don't know it. Half of humanity still lives without three meals a day. Is that doom? 40% of humanity does not have decent sanitation. Is that doom? It probably would be to the kinds of people who use the word doomer as an insult, and therein lies the irony. They are painting a caricature without really thinking about the state of life as it is now. In Afghanistan, parents sell kidneys to feed their kids. Doom? A third of Pakistan drowned in a mega monsoon. Doom? In America, a minor operation can bankrupt you and leave you homeless. Doom? To the person living it, that is doom. But it's easy enough to say it's not. Ha ha! when you're riding from an ivory tower, isn't it? And it's easy enough to, to say it cannot happen here, but that phrase became famous for a reason. When people start saying it, <clears throat> especially those in power, especially when they laugh at first sardonically and then nervously, it usually is. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Umer Hack, the godfather of doom for uh, ushering in the first day of spring 2023.
coming in at 4.24 p.m. this afternoon, at least, I guess, on the, uh, I think that's Eastern time, so I guess, is it 3.24 or 4.20 or 5.24 Texas time? I can't remember. Anyway, get out there and enjoy the uh, first bell of spring 2023 while you still can. What do you think, little dog? Do you want to go take your last pee of winter? My guys.